This is my ET5. In my first video, I describe it as a very good driver's car. Well, you should tell by the look of it, it's pretty obvious. But after spending six months with my car, well, I think I was totally wrong. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm Harris, you're watching my EV. If you want a car to be a good driver's car, then the city position is very crucial. And this is the first thing that this ET5 let me down, and it was caused by several reasons. Many are saying that the headroom of the ET5 is not very good, and it's mainly because of its roof. Well, you see, the roof line goes like this. Yes, it looks marvelous, but it will bring some problems. If you are short, and when you sit in the car, your head will be pretty much here. Then the headroom will be okay, it's pretty obvious. But if you are tall, then your head will be pretty much here, which is just next to the B pillar. And this is exactly where the highest point of the roof is. So you can still get plenty of headroom. The only thing you have to pay attention to is, well, when you're getting into the car, this bit will sort of get in the way. So you have to duck your head. Well, it's no biggie. And it's a typical supercar issue, so it looks cool. But unfortunately, if your height are from, well, say five feet seven to six feet, then when you're sitting in the car, your head will be pretty much here, which is next to the sunshade. And if you break hard, your head will just bend on it. It's pretty hurtful. And as a 6 feet 3 guy, well, I guess I'm lucky. After getting the roofing straight, let's talk about the glass. You see, the ET5's front end is much closer to the ground than the uh, normal sedan. So the windshield and side windows are lower, which means everything around you is also lowered when you are in the driver's seat. This will make you feel like you are sitting much higher. And this is a fatal flaw for a good driver's car. Sometimes I even thought I'm driving an SUV. Of course, this design has its own advantages, because now you can know where your nose is better. Plus, you can rest your elbow like this. However, when seeing backwards, the view isn't as good as seeing forward. Yes, that's exactly what you can see in the rearview mirror. And sometimes if you're followed by a car which is not very wide and not very tall, it will just disappear because it's completely in your blind spot. Oh, this is another typical supercar issue. What's more, the rearview mirror itself will create some certain blind spot, which can be very annoying. Word on the street is that New is already developing some kind of new digital rearview mirror for all the NT 2.0 platform cars, which will be available in Neo Shop. Now, let's get back into the cabin and talk about the most annoying thing to me, the steering wheel. Well, personally, I have a set of standard for a good steering wheel. It shouldn't be too big, it should be facing right towards my chest, it should be nice to grip, and it should have nice grip, well, on my hand. And this steering wheel has absolutely nothing to do with all of them. It's too big, it's too far, it's too thick, it's too hard, and in some circumstances, it can be slippery. What's more, due to the low front end, the steering column cannot be positioned properly, which means the steering wheel is now sort of facing my face. Well, I can see it fits on those large SUVs, but I truly cannot understand how a helm like this is in a sporty sedan. And a steering wheel with this size can cause another problem. You may think it's just pointless to talk about the leg room in the front because it's always widely adjustable. But for a tall guy like me and in a round car like this, my left knee is going to be like this. If I turn the steering wheel too much, it will just sort of get in the way. Sometimes I was so annoyed that I just deal with it. Some may say that, why don't you just put your left foot on the rest pedal? Well, that's because the shape of it is just wrong. I just cannot fully step on it without twisting my ankle. And when I step it like this, 
because the cushion cannot support my thigh properly, my knee will be right against the speaker, which is hard. And I don't like touch hard things. So in conclusion, that is why in the previous video, I said that the ES6 is actually a better ET5 because it doesn't have all these issues. But if you do want a sporty sedan well, like this, it could be a bit difficult because if you are between say five feet seven to six feet and your arms and legs are not particularly long, it isn't the car for you if you want to sit properly. And it was even before start driving it. Usually the first impression of vehicle dynamics is from the acceleration because the throttle pedal is probably the first thing you touch when you drive a car. And this is exactly why I mistook it as a good driver's car in the first time I drove it. Because the acceleration is just top notch. It's bonkers, it's smooth, and the throttle response is just insane. But the same can't be said about braking. Due to the existence of region, the brake can be a bit weird. If you put it on the lowest level, uh, the front bit of the brake will be so sensitive that when you slightly touch the brake pedal, it will just hit the wall. And when you put it on the highest level, well, the wall will disappear. But apart from having to get used to the strong brake from the motor itself after you release the throttle pedal, the whole process of the braking can be a bit sluggish. Well, if you drive on the racetrack, this probably won't affect your lap time, but you can definitely feel it. And when I do feel it, I was like that. And the same expression can be seen on my face when cornering. In my first test drive, Neil was constantly boasting about their filing suspension. They said the virtual pivot point can reduce tire wear, offer smoother steering, and get rid of too much agility, which will make you feel tired on highways. And I think it's an overkill, because now the steering response near the center depth zone is a bit too dead. Along with the 2.2 tons body, the high profile of the tires, and the typical soft shoulder, and the catastrophically bad grip from Michelin E Primacy tires, the steering it's a bit delayed, at least not what I want. Then the performance of the suspension is not what I want either, because it's too hard when I want it to be soft, and it's too soft when it's got to be hard. When you encounter a bit of bumpy roads or speed bumps, it does feel like a driver's car, because the shock absorber just sort of stop absorbing and the car movement will copy the road surface. And when you do want it to be a good driver's car, say attacking high-speed corners, the lateral support, well, it's not really supporting. And the seat can't hold you properly, which means your upper body will be a bit out of shape. What's worse, when you pass a road and bridge link, well, the rear suspension just sort of give up. And if you're going too fast, the rear tires will get airborne. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not saying this ET5 is no good or that I have regretted buying it. Although the car is quite picky about the roads, your height and your preferences, it still outperforms any electric sedan of its size. The cabin is cozy, the materials are great, Nomi can always light you up, and the excellent Neo Pilot makes it a fantastic highway cruiser. What's more, Neo's impeccable service can let you feel like you're buying more than just a car. As for the mind-blowing acceleration and the fabulously sporty exterior, well, they just happen to be there. So, if you have anything else you want to know about my ET5, please let me know in the comment. And in the next video of it, well, I'll be answering all of the questions. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with your friends. After all, your support is what drives us to keep on. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.